Are we good? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we've, we've finished talking about sort of adaptive functioning and um, IQ or intelligence or cognitive ability. Um, now we'll, we're, we'll move on to other things. You don't have to know them as much in depth, so I'll be moving, moving through them. But um, the next thing is um, achievement, and that's a, another one of those things where, like the violin, maybe you have or you have not administered it. Uh, achievement test is something you probably have some experience with. Um, achievement testing is important because a lot of times, especially for children, because the, these decisions are going to be done in terms of placement, and uh, sometimes um, the the primary problem or the presenting problem is problems doing well in school, and you want to determine like why that is. Um, so they're required to diagnose a learning disorder, and we'll talk about that in a little more, m bit more detail. And it usually refers to like um, less to overall potential, like cognitive ability is like how much can they do, solving problems, doing all these things. Achievement is like based on school specific skills learned in school, how much can they apply them. So it's very, whereas in uh, say the Wexler scales, you have a test like similarities, which involves abstract concept formation, all these other things. Um, here it's like, well, a spelling test, it measures spelling. <laughs> so it's a lot more clear, but it's still important. So um, these are sort of the achievement tests that um, you should at least keep in mind, with the ones in bold being the ones that you should know the more about. The RAT4, I wouldn't even call it an achievement test. It's more like a screener. Um, it's a wide range achievement test, fourth edition. There are two forms. There's a blue and a tan. Green and a tan. Green and blue? Green, Green and blue. Um, I have a bias against using that one unless I absolutely have to. Um, it really only ha it, it's composed of four subtests. Um, well, I think I talk about it a little bit more. And there's a Wexler Individual Achievement Test, third edition. The really nice thing about the Wyatt is um, it measures a lot of different things. It saves you a lot of time. Instead of having to give um, more specific uh, tests, it, it actually is really well. And it's co-normed with the Wexler scales. So you can see in a lot of detail what would you expect based on a certain FSIQ or VCI and then be able to convert that. Um, another one that is used is the Woodcock-Johnson test of achievement. Those are co-normed with a Woodcock-Johnson test of cognitive abilities. Um, I put the, the, the differential ability skills, DOS 2, here um, just because they're are tests in the DOS 2 that also measure achievement. So those are really nice. Um, then there's a Peabody Individual Achievement Test revised and the Kaufman Test of Educational Achievement. Um, these three are for children. These three can be used for children and adults. Is there anything else? Okay. So, um, Ah, there. Uh, the RAD4 is really a screener. It consists of only four subtests. And um, you, you don't actually have to know, go have detailed knowledge of assessment of achievement tests. So I have them in the slides for your own um, use or if you're curious or interested about it. Um, and um, um, but I'm not going to stop and describe each one except for maybe the rat because it's really quick. Um, so it has four subtests. It's word read, reading and, wow, I, maybe I have dyslexia, and sentence comprehension. A word reading, they just have to read from a list uh, of words. Um, and then you're looking at how much they, they, how they can read. Sentence comprehension, they have to infer something from a sentence and fill out the blank. Um, spelling, they have to spell. And math computation, you have to see how they can, uh, how they well they can do math. It's about about all there is to it. Uh, the other thing about the rat is there is um, the only sort of index comes out of word reading and sentence comprehension, um, and it's just a, a verbal knowledge. I forgot the name of it. Comprehension. Yeah. 
reading comprehension, right? Because it's both how well can they can read and how much they can understand. So that's the only index. It's really looked at as separate, and it really doesn't give you a lot of information other than like mm, there's a potential for something going on. So in general, achievement tests aren't going to be really covered on the prelims. They are, but you have you don't need to have a detailed knowledge of all the tests and the Woodcock Johnson. You just have to know what the Woodcock Johnson measures, know a little bit about the structure. But not in as depth as the list. For right. So the Y at three, you should be lucky that you're not learning the Y at two because it's really, really, really obnoxious. Um, the Y at three is somewhat obnoxious, but much better than the Y at two. Um, the thing that's really nice about the Y at three is that it has subtests that stand on their own really well. For instance, remember I talked a little bit about the I talked a little bit about the PPVT that measures expressive, receptive vocabulary. Expressive vocabulary. No, receptive vocabulary, how much they can understand words. Like point to the, um, you know, point to the toothbrush, and they point to the one. Which one shows tethered, and you point to that. Well, the Wyatt has a small subtest of that. So instead of having to give, say, the PPVT, and you, instead of having to give the gray or oral reading test, you can just do the Wyatt, and you have a lot of other tests sort of clumped into one. Not in as much detail, not as much information, but for a general, if you want to diagnose, the Wyatt is really good for that. Um, these are the subtests, and then they have certain compo composites. There's the oral language composite, which is how well they can understand spoken language and use it. Um, there's total reading, which is how well they can read and understand what they're reading. There's basic reading, which is just like, can they really just, are they able to read? And then there's reading comprehension and fluency, which is um, how, how much they like understand and are able to process and draw inferences from what they do. Written expression, it's about how well they can construct sentences and an essay, like how well they can write. Mathematics is about how well they can, how, like whether or not they can solve different math problems, or why it actually goes from basic arithmetic like what is one plus three to calculus. I think the last item is, you know, there's a drawing a limit of a function and then an integral of a, a, the function. And there's math fluency. Every time you see the word fluency, it measures how much a per, like how much of something a person can do in a certain amount of time. So how, let's see how many math problems they can do in a, in a minute. How many multiplication problems they can do in a minute. Um, that's also really a lot used for um, oral fluency would be, uh, you know, name as many animals as you can in a minute. And the why it has that. So you should know, um, that's about what you need to know about the Wyatt. And again, I have an entire list of every part here, um, listening comprehend of the different subtests, listening comprehension, early reading skills, math problem solving, alphabet writing fluency, word reading, sentence composition, essay composition, pseudo word decoding, numerical operations, oral reading fluency, spelling, oral expression, and math fluency. Um, probably don't have to know them in a lot of detail. Um, just sort of if you can remember general things about the Wyatt, that should be good enough, I think. Uh, the Woodcock-Johnson 3 is another one. It's also another like big one. Uh, every report that I've seen from uh, school psychologists from San Francisco Unified School District, they use the DOS and the Woodcock-Johnson. I've never seen anything else. It has 22 subtests, so it's actually quite long, um, but it's easier to score uh, than the Wyatt, I think. Uh, the first 12 subtests go into uh, the standard battery, and then they have 10 subtests that are the extended battery, which usually what you would give if you have a reason to. For instance, um, the Wyatt 3, the Wyatt has, uh, you have to give pseudo word decoding, which is read the list of nonsense words that don't exist and nobody knows, nobody has heard of. Um, the reason being some people can recognize words and they can't read them, but they recognize the way they look. So they can do really word when, really good when they read lists of words, but if they have dyslexia, they won't be able to recognize um, a word that they've never seen before. So oftentimes like children with dyslexia or adults with dyslexia will do really good on list reading tasks but not with fake words. So whereas in the Wyatt, you have to give both, 
word reading and pseudo word decoding. In the Woodcock Johnson, you do word reading in the standard battery, and if you suspect dyslexia, you will do an equivalent of the pseudo word decoding that is part of the extended battery, and it's called a word attack. Um, so wait, if they have dyslexia, they will do worse on word attack? Um, the, the question was, if they have dyslexia, they will typically do worse in word attack. Um, the answer is, well, it depends. If they have, com they will do, if they have like a significant problem reading, they will do about the same. But if, uh, they, if they have some compensatory strategies where they've been taught how to recognize words without having to read them, they'll do, they, they'll do better on the word reading than in the word attack. And so if, if they do have dyslexia and they're doing better on word attack, then maybe the um, techniques that they've been trained are really working for them. Right. If they've, if they've done like a phonics program, they would do equally well on both. Thanks. So it's hard to know um, for sure what it is, but that's like a, the general idea behind this. It's like you give the standard battery, and then if you suspect something, then you'll do that. It also has like knowledge, for instance, all these... Um, math knowledge, science knowledge, those are all in the extended battery. It's computer scored. It measures these uh, broad curricular areas, reading, mathematics, written language, oral language, and academic knowledge. Not surprising, it's very similar to the Wyatt because they both measure the same thing. Um, this is a table that is hard for you to read because it's scanned. Um, the, the other cool thing about the Wyatt, the, about the Woodcock Johnson, is it has these uh, indices or these composites that clump things in a different way. So, for instance, um, they have total achievement, which is sort of like the general aggregate measure of academic achievement, but they also have like academic applications. That's something that is unique to the Woodcock Johnson, the way they divide these other clusters, where um, it's like how well they can apply knowledge. So you can distinguish and be more diagnostic about what the problem might be. Academic fluency, maybe they can do things, but they have a processing deficit that makes them take a lot longer. So they get all the fluency tests, and they get into academic fluency, and uh, then you can see like, well, maybe the problem is slowness, not like knowledge. Um, there's academic skills, um, phonemes, and general academic knowledge. So that's something neat that you should know that the Woodcock Johnson has. Um, any questions so far?